Well, we want to welcome you today to uh, the 11:30 Wednesday lunch and Bible study from Doctrinal Studies Bible Church in Birmingham, Alabama. <clears throat> We're currently in a study of uh, Genesis 6, 7, 8, 9. We call it the Days of Noah, and it's based on Matthew 24, 37 through 39, when Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. We live in the days of the Son of Man, the coming of Christ, uh, first coming of Christ, and we're looking to that second coming of Christ, and we live in those days, and so what I wanted to do is go back. He seemed to be, he used the word just as a comparison. Look at the days of Noah, he says, uh, to understand the days of the Son of Man. Look for comparisons. So what I've done is my study is really looking at that. Chapter 6, 7, 8, 9, I'm looking at that. What is kind of interesting to me, and you will see it as I go through my study of these uh, four chapters, we're looking at each chapter, each verse to find the, to pick them apart and find out what it was that caused the destruction of a civilization uh, under divine judgment that would be uh, an eye-opener to us in our days. What I found interesting about chapter 6, 7, 8, and 9 is that they, they actually are Noah's jur uh, journal. Chapter 6 is a journal he writes about the last 120 years of the civilization of the antediluvian world. Chapter 7, which we're going to study today, is a second journal, and I call it the Voyage Journal because it's the first five months in the ark during the storm that destroyed the antediluvian world. We're going to find a journal in chapter 8, and we're going to find a journal in chapter 9. And I, I find that to be of interest as a student of the Bible. So... After a word of prayer, we're going to do the end. We're going to read. I took the seventh chapter based on his journal, uh, how he was writing the, the, the five months at sea uh, in the flood. Uh, he, he, the first five months is, is, is in chapter uh, seven. So I've broken his journal down into three parts of chapter 7, and we're going to go through that today. I'm going to show you what he wrote about that would probably be of importance to us. Well, it's a whole chapter, <laughs> so we'll take a look at it. Remember, the Bible is a spiritual book for spiritual people, for spiritual living. You can't, you can't learn it nor live it in carnality. Evidence of carnality in the Christian life is personal sin. It could be mental attitude type sins, sins of the tongue, or vert sins. What am I, how do I get out of carnality and back into the spirituality of the indwelling ministry of the Holy Spirit in the church age under the new covenant? I'm a believer, you're a believer, if you believe in the gospel of Christ. He came into the world to die for your sin, was buried and raised from the dead the third day. When, uh, when you hear and believe that, you get saved. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes it, and that is the gospel. Uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. Now that you're saved, you're indwelt by the Holy Spirit in the church age under the new covenant, and that's the, that's the third member of the Godhead that lives inside your, your mortal body. Uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 carnality, living in the flesh of Galatians 5, 16, when you live in the flesh and fulfill the desires of the flesh and commit personal sin, the Bible tells you what sin is and you commit sin. How do I get back out of, how do I get out of carnality of the flesh and get back into the spirit, the Holy Spirit that is there to live out the Christian life in me? How do I do that? 1 John 1, 9 is one of many scriptures. It's the one I use. If we confess our sin, personal sin, mental attitude, sin of the tongue, overt, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us. The word cleansing goes back to verse 7 of 1 John 
1, 7. I'm in verse 9 here. Go back to verse 7. The cleansing is through the blood of Christ. So when I confess my sin, the work of Christ on the cross works on my behalf as a Christian, not as an unbeliever. The first time I went to the cross, it was for Adamic sin. And what I got when I believed the gospel was justification. What, what I'm after as a Christian in confession of my sin is still the blood of Christ that takes care of sin. If the blood of Christ takes care of all sin, when I confess my sin, I'm back to the cross, not for, not for salvation and not for justification. I'm back there for sanctification. I'm back there for the indwelling ministry and power of the Holy Spirit in my life. So I'm going to give you a moment to confess your sin in silence and privacy. According to 1 Peter 2, we are a believer priest and it's our responsibility. I give you a moment. Well, our Heavenly Father, we're thankful today for these that have come our way by the automobile and the Internet, especially the Internet. I pray today, Father, the Holy Spirit would minister the truth. Jesus said uh, in John 8, 32, you will know the truth and truth will set you free. In John 15, in talking about the, the, the coming ministry of the Holy Spirit in the life of, of New Covenant believers, that he would teach and recall the Word of God. Teach, the, teach it to us, put it in our soul, and recall it in proper time of importance to our life so that we could walk by faith and not by sight. And so I pray today, Father, that we've confessed our sins. We come, Father, to... Feed upon the word of God, for it is what stabilizes us in the world. It what separates us under sanctification, the great ministry of the Holy Spirit, as he teaches us the word of God so that it can be recalled to our life in so many key ways of, of importance. I pray this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, here we are. I broke chapter 7 into three parts. And we're going to study it. Later, you can go. You got your Bible? <laughs> Come on now. You got your Bible? And you got, a, you got a pen? And if you got a piece of paper? Now, later, you can go to our website, doctrinalstudies.com, and you can pull down my lesson all written out. But in the meantime, it's, by, it's class. Okay? You've got your textbook, Bible. You got a pencil and paper. Write them down. Later, you can pull this up. But right now, it's class. This is Bible class. Here we go. So, uh, Noah, has, Noah has done a voyage journal. And we're going to look verses 1 through 10, 11 through 16, 17 through 24. Three sections. Here's what he started. He said, he wrote, Then the Lord said to Noah, said to me, Enter the ark, you and all your household, for you alone, that is no one his household, that would be eight people, he and his wife, three sons and their wife, I have, I have seen to be, uh, for you alone, I have seen to be righteous before me in this time, that last 120 years of the Antilopian civilization. You shall take with you every clean animal by seven, male and female, and of the animals, that are not clean, two, a male and a female, also birds of the sky by seven, male and female, uh, to keep offsprings alive on the face of all the earth. Why? Because the rest of them are going to die by flood. Verse 4, for after seven days, that's the boarding days, he's writing about they had seven days to get the animals and his family on the ark. After seven days, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. And I will blot out all, I will blot out from the face of the land every living thing that I have made. Verse 5, Noah did according to all that the Lord had commanded him on the boarding of the ark. Verse 6, now Noah was 600 years old when the flood of water came upon the earth. That's a, a date of importance to the voyage. Then Noah and his sons and his wife and his son's wife with him entered the ark because of the water of the flood. Of clean animals that are not clean and birds and everything that creeps on the ground. They all went into the ark. 
uh, of Noah by two, male and female, as God had commanded Noah. He made sure he had everybody in order boarded on. Verse 10, and it came about after the seven days of boarding that the water of the flood came on the earth as God had said. God said it's going to happen. You got seven days to get everything boarded. He told them exactly what to put on there. What he didn't mention here, he mentioned chapter 6, and that is be sure you got enough food for the animals, and he told them what amount he was going to need for the animals and uh, the people. Now, after seven days, the, they're, they're getting ready for the flood. After seven days, so here, here are some points that I, I want you to get out of this part of the first 10 verses. The first 10 verses. Noah had seven days for boarding the ark. All the animals, in other words, a zoo, a floating zoo. The ark became a floating zoo. All of them, that was that. So, he's got seven days to board. We're going to see that in the second month on the 10th day, of the year 600, they're boarding. For after seven full days, sixth chapter, verse four, fourth, seventh chapter, after, after seven days, after seven more days, I will send rain on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. I will, bl I will blot out from the face of, of, of land everything that I have made. That's chapter uh, 7 verse 4. I got on my paper 6 4, but as we see, it's, it's, chap it's chapter 7. I'm going to change that so I don't forget that. I'll change it when I get home on my, so that when you pull it down, it'll have the correct one. 7 4. four. Why? Now, here are five things out of first 10 verses. In the seventh chapter, verse 1, we learn that everything pertaining to the will of God begins with the word of God. God said to Noah, I mean, you're going to hear this over and over and over and over again. And there's a principle here, and I don't want you to miss it. We learn that everything pertaining to the will of God comes from the word of God. Now, you've got to learn that in your life. There's a formula that you should have. The word of God takes you to the will of God that takes you to the work of God. That's just a formula. See? And that whole principle of the word to the will to the work is the, is the doctrine of the faith cycle. Faith comes by hearing, hearing the word of God. And so that's really important in your life. And you see it, he, he writes it in his journal that way. He, he's going to talk about the Lord said and I did. The Lord said and I did. The Lord said and I did. See, I, and I did is the faith cycle. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You're going to see that over and over in the story of Jonah. Then the Lord said to Jonah in the ark, enter the ark, you and all of your household, for you alone, talking about he and his household, I have seen to be righteous before me in this time. And what time was this? A time of tremendous turmoil. I mean, there... The last 120 years, the, we learned in the sixth chapter that evil, the, the hearts and minds of the people, the intent of the heart and the mind of the people were evil every minute of every day. Okay? And so I want you to write this down in your paper. You should read Romans 1, 16 to, through 23. You should read that. Now, a second thing is in verses 2 through 4, Noah records that the Lord gave details to the directive will of God for Noah how to board in order to be secured with animals that were going to be necessary on the other side of the flood as well as his family. And, and it's the direct... Listen, you need to understand the will of God in your life. You need to understand three 
distinct categories of the will of God. The directive will of God, what God wants, what he tells you, what, and how much detail. He wants not, not only what he tells you, but whatever details you want to be detailed in it. That's the directive will of God. And, and he's, he gave him extra instructions about warning in verses 1 through 10. The second part of that will is the permissive will, what God permits. And then we have the overruling will of God. When enough's enough, God inter intervenes. Now, Noah's under the directive will of God. This is what I want you to do, and Noah is doing it. I want you to do this, and he did it. I want you to do this, and he did it. I want you to do this, and he did it. That's called walking by faith and not by sight. Doesn't matter what your opinion is. When God gives you a directive will, it is your responsibility to obey it. God said he did. God said he did. Not my will, but thy will be done is the point. Even Jesus had to live by that. The third thing I want you to see that's in verse 4 is that God gave Noah a weather report as he boarded the boat. He gave him a weather report. He told him what kind of storm he was going to be in. And it was going to be 40 days and 40 nights of nothing but rain. They had never seen rain before. They had seen water. But not from the sky. They operated under a heavy mist. And there were five major rivers. We'll talk about it next time we meet. During the antediluvian period. That there was only a couple of them that were considered continents. Well, we'll, we'll talk about that. I'm, I, I'm just trying to... He gave him a weather report. He says, look, at it's going <clears> to... <throat> And he's going to give more on the weather report. But he says, look, it's going, to, it's going to rain. You're going to see water as you've never seen it for 40 days and 40 nights. In, in, uh, in verse 5, Noah did the faith drill. He did in, in the, 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 what we call the faith cycle, the faith drill. The faith drill is walking Faith comes by hearing, believing, applying, completing. That's the drill. And God wants you to walk it. He wants you to learn it, believe it, walk it, and let God complete it. That's the drill. You know, if you go to football practice, you have drills. If you go to basketball, football, basketball, whatever. If you go to band, you have drill. Quote, practice. Well, he's doing that. And you should put this on your paper, Hebrews 11, 7 and 8, where it talks about this. It talks about this very thing. It talks about how, how uh, Noah prepared an ark and, and preached the gospel of Christ and condemned a whole world. Oh, you should read that. I know you want it now, don't you? <laughs> That's all right. Hebrews 11, 7 and 8. All right. In verses 6 through 10, the Lord dated the Chasaclivic flood that would come after seven days of boarding. And here are two dates that are really important. 210, 600. Second month, 10th day, year 600 of Noah's life. Start getting animals on, and then the rain will come. Two seventeen six six hundred. Two seventeen six hundred. Seven days later, the flood's going to come. I know. Come on now. Two ten six hundred. Two seventeen six hundred. Two ten six hundred. Get the ark loaded. Two seventeen six hundred. Flood's coming. God's going to shut the door and the flood's going to come. 
Now, the second half of his journal in the seventh chapter goes from 11 to 16. Watch this. In the 600th year of Noah's life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on the same day, all the fountains of the great deep burst open, and the floodgates of the skies were opened. Never happened before. The rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, as God had said. Verse 13. On the very same day, Noah and Shem and Ham and Japheth, the sons of Noah and Noah's wife and three wives of the sons with him had entered the ark. 217. They're all boarded. Animals and man that's going to take the trip. Verse 14. They and every beast after its kind, all the cattle after their kind, every creepy thing that creeps on the earth after its kind, every bird after its kind, that species in the Hebrew, all sorts of birds. So they went into the ark to Noah by twos of all flesh, in which was the breath of life. Those who entered, male and female of all flesh, entered as God had commanded him, and the Lord closed the door behind Noah. Now, don't miss that. All the animals aboard. And so Noah's there. All his sons, all the wives are aboard. And there are two of them standing outside the ark. It's two, it, it's two seventeen six hundred. And God says to Noah, get on board. He says to Noah, all the animals on. Yes, sir. Are all the birds? Yes, sir. Are all the creepy things? Yes, sir. Is it your wife on? Yes, sir. Three sons? Yes, sir. Three wives? Yes, sir. You get on board. What? You get on board. Well, wait. How are we going to shut the door? You said not to, not to prepare any hydraulics or anything to shut that door. This door is going to be humongous. I know. It's time for you to board. Well, who's going to shut the door, Lord? I am. And as soon as I shut that door and seal it, I'm going to shut the door and seal it. I'm going to shut the door. I'm on the outside. I'm going to be on the outside. I'm going to shut the door and seal it. Then it's going to rain for 40 days and 40 nights, and the, the fountains deep in the earth are going to erupt like a volcano, and the floodgates of heaven are going to open, and water is going to be like you can't imagine. You're going to be in a storm like, and you'll be okay. See, they've never seen a storm. There's been no storms. They've got nothing to compare it to. You know what they have to trust? The Word of God. How about you? How about you? And so they got 40 days and 40 nights. Let's see, how far did I get? I got to 16. That's where, that's where I wanted to go. They're in the ark. The ark is sealed. The door is closed by the Lord from the outside and sealed for the trip. The 40 days and 40 nights is going to take us from 217, 600 to 327, 600. Remember, we're, we have lunar calendars, 30-day months. In the 600th year of Noah's wife of this life, in the second month, on the 17th day of the month, on the very same day, all the fountains of the great deep burst open, the floodgates of the skies were open, and rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights. I want to give you three points. On 217, 600 of Noah's life, 
the fountains of the deep, subterranean. opened up like a volcano eruption and the storage bends of water below and above that had been prepared by God in the creation of the world for this very day. In 2 Peter, the third chapter, he's going to say that he, has re that he has stored up fire in the belly of the earth and in the sky from creation that will close out the, the days of the Son of Man. Fire. 2 Peter 3. You see, God has everything planned and prepared for your life before your life gets to the place that it happens. That's why you need God in control of your life. You don't have to worry about what tomorrow is because you know who's got the tomorrows. The same guy who had your yesterdays that has your todays has all your tomorrows no matter what storm or what your life goes through. You want your life in the hands of God. He has the power to shut the door of the ark and seal it so it can make the journey. Do you know that? The earth was flooded by a great amount of water for 40 days and 40 nights. It began on the very day they entered the ark and the door was shut and sealed. That's the security of God, isn't it? Let me tell you, the day that you believe that Jesus died for your sins, was buried and raised from the dead the third day, called the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. God takes up residence in your life through the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the church age, and he seals you. Ephesians 1, 13, 14, he seals you unto the day of redemption, the day the ark settles wherever God intends it to settle. Ephesians 4.30. You want God in charge of your life. And you want the word of God to direct your path. The Lord said to Noah, and the Lord is so thankful that the Lord is the one who directs his life. He is today in the midst of that flood. What does this teach us? It teaches that God's perfect timing in his perfect plan. All the details of the promises from the word of God are now coming to completion by God in the midst of a terrible storm that's going to destroy everything else in the world. In the world. This perfect timing of the plan of God is seen very clearly when the Lord from the outside closed the door and sealed it. You want that in your life. You want that in your life. God has provided you that in Jesus Christ. No man can come to the Father except through Christ. And once he's in Christ, he is sealed by God in Christ. See, that's Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 compared to 4, 30 of Ephesians. Sealed until the day of redemption. Isn't that wonderful? Now, here we are in Genesis 7th chapter 17. We're in the last section of Noah's uh, journal about his voyage of five months in the ark. He spent five months in the ark. Here I am, verse 17. Then the flood came upon the earth for 40 days, and the water increased. Pay attention to the water increase. The water prevailed. Pay attention to that. The water prevailed. Verse 17. 40 days, 
and the earth for 40 days, and the water prevailed or increased and lifted up the ark in the beginning so that it rose above the earth. Verse 18, the waters prevailed. That's the second time that's mentioned. And increased greatly upon the earth, and the ark floated on the surface, surface of the water. That's new. And he's recording it. It, it. This is all out of his journal. Verse 19, the waters prevailed. That's the third time that's been said. More and more upon the earth, said that all the high mountains, everywhere under the heavens were covered with water. Verse 20, this is the fourth prevail. The water prevailed 15 cubic higher. Biblical, biblical math, that's 22.5 feet above the highest mountains. So that the earth, so, well, and he'll tell you, and the mountains were covered. Why? So that the ark would not have any problem in its maneuver. Now, who, who's steering that ark? Don't have a rudder in any of that stuff that we know about. The Lord. And he's providing everything, even the mountains. He's going to make sure he's got 22 and a half feet above the highest mountains so that the ark will not have any inference in the plan of God. Aren't you glad God's on your side? Listen, if I was choosing, like, to play ball, and they said, let's choose up sides, I, I'd pick God every time. First one I'd want on my team is God. <laughs> How come he's not first on your team? My, 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 come on, people. How is it possible that you're leaving him set on a bench when he's the most important player you can have on your team? My, my. All flesh that moved on the earth perished. Birds, cattle, beasts, every swarming thing that swarmed under the earth and all mankind. And of all that was on the dry land, all in whose nostrils was the breath of the spirit of life died. Thus he blotted out every living thing that was on the face of the land of the antediluvian civilization. From man to animal to creepy things to birds of the sky, they were blotted out from the earth, and only Noah was left together with those that were with him in the ark. Fifth time, waters prevailed. Now watch it, this is the fifth time. The water prevailed upon the earth 150 days. Under the lunar calendar, that's five months. They were in the ark in chapter 7, according to Noah's journal of his voyage. See, I didn't tell him that ahead of time. He's keeping a record. You know, somewhere on a wall, on the inside of that ark, is a guy who's marking off days of the week. Because he don't know how long he's going to be in there. He was only told that it was going to rain 40 days and 40 nights. He's going to be in that ark 150 days and longer. How does he know it's 50? How does he know? He, you know, listen, he, he started counting at 40. When is it ever going to stop raining and the storm and all that? He, you know, he's marking off. Well, it's 40. God said 40 days and 40 nights. It's over. And now the water. They're dealing with the, the, the water, and, and he keeps on marking. When are we going to get out of this thing? It's 
Still got enough food, haven't we? Yeah. Okay, we're all right. And he keeps marking them off. How do we, how does he, only way we know five months is he's telling us. <laughs> ah, don't you love the Bible? Don't you love that? Is that not so every day in our life? Jesus says, as it was in the days of Noah, so, so shall it be in the days of it. How important is the word of God in your life today in the days of the Son of Man? How much, how much interest do you have in the directive will of God every day in your life? Do you think that the will of God is important every day of everybody inside that ark? And Noah keeps marking those days off. Every time he gets to seven days, he marks through it and keeps going. And at the end of chapter 7, he's been there 150 days. <laughs> he has been there since 217600 to 717600. How do I know that? Noah kept a journal. And it was accurate with the timing of God. Because Noah was a righteous man. And God knew he was a righteous man. And he wrote that down, and it became part of our Bible. I want to tell you five things in closing about the waters prevail. When you get to 17 through 24, you're in what's called, and the waters prevailed. They increased. And the boat is afloat. There is nothing but water. You look, you know, they didn't have a window except they had a vent at the very top. It's probably a good thing they didn't have windows. But if you got if you went up and looked out through the vent some way or another, probably probably somewhere at some point they did because they sent birds, we'll see. But all you would have seen is water with no direction apart from God. Five things. We are told in verse 17 that the floodwaters began prevailing by increasing enough to lift the ark above the earth. Then we're told the waters prevailed enough to float the ark above the surface of the waters, verse 18. Then 19 through 20, we're told that the waters prevailed, the floodwaters prevailed to float the ark 22 and a half feet above the highest mountains. Then we're told in, in verses 21 through 23, the waters prevailed so that all flesh, animal and man, he, 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 he describes them perishing or dying. Listen, in verse 21, he says every, everything that had the breath of God in them, the breath of life, that comes from God, perished. In verse 22, it says they died. In verse 23, it says their life was snuffed out, blotted out. Except for those on the ark. And finally, it says the water prevailed for 150 days. Five months. That takes them from 217, 600 to, to 717, 600 or five months. Let me close by saying this. The floodwaters that destroyed the unbelieving world of the antediluvian world was the same water that rescued Noah and his family and the animals from the flood. The same water that destroyed unbelievers preserved the believers, the water 
the waters prevailed. The waters prevailed. The waters prevailed. Why? Because of the importance of the ark and what was on it. Because of God. I want you to write down 1 Peter 3.20. Peter writes, eight people were brought safely through the waters. Second Peter 2 Peter 2.5, <clears throat> God preserved Noah and the seven others, but the world of the ungodly perished. You should read 2 Peter 3, 5 through 7. And you should pay attention to God in your life. You ought to pay attention to God in your life. For as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. Matthew 24, 37 through 39. You should take that stuff serious. You should take it serious. Let me remind you again. We want you aboard the ark of salvation. Christ came into the world to die for your sins, Adamic sins. This, the sin that all people are under, identically. Alienated from God, blind, cursed, condemned, at enmity, darkness, death, perishing, natural man, under the wrath, ungodly, sinners, unrighteous. Everybody is in that. Only way out is through the gospel of Jesus Christ that he died for your sins, was buried on third day, raised from the dead. You have a Savior who died for you that God raised from the dead to live in you through the person of the Holy Spirit. This is the way out of this evil world. This world too, like the antediluvian, World, The post-Diluvian world will one day, not by water, but by fire. And we don't know when that is. At some point, they'll begin to mark on a calendar, but it won't be till after the rapture of the church. And when will the rapture come? Any given moment. When the church will be removed from the earth and the second coming of Christ will be issued in. And it will not be a pleasant thing. It will be the flood business. It will be the divine judgment part. But listen, it, that's not only... Re listen, you get saved to live the abundant life. The greatest decision I ever made in my life, period, up, up and over and out, no doubt about it, was the day I believed that Jesus died for my sins personally, was buried and raised from the dead. In 1961, it was the greatest day of my life. It changed my life so wonderfully. I want that for you. The ark is being built. We live in the period when the ark is being built, and it's time to get ready, get prepared for the, for the coming of Christ. This time with judgment, not salvation, but judgment. Father, we thank you today for these that have stayed with me through this hour. Pray the Holy Spirit would minister the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. God's Son has only begotten Son that whoever believed in Him would not perish but have everlasting life. What must I believe? I must believe that Jesus came into this world to die on a cross, be buried and raised from the dead on the third day. Listen. Father, why don't the people understand he had to fulfill Passover? He had to fulfill unleavened bread. He had to fulfill first fruits and Pentecost. These were all four Old Testament shadow Christology doctrines that were important 
to understand the historical significance of Christ dying on a cross, being buried and raised from the dead, ascending back to the Father, and sending the Holy Spirit back for the church age under the new covenant. It's so important. What is wrong with us that we can't understand that? I pray for those today, Father. They'll never be able to outswim 40 days and 40 nights, and the water's prevailing. But they don't have to. They can get aboard the ark by grace through faith and not of themselves. It is a gift from God in Jesus' name. Amen.